What I love about Laurel Dace is first of all, they're gorgeous. They're red, they're silver, they're yellow. They're gorgeous fish. It's just, they're just wonderful little critters. And they're right in our backyard. So the Laurel Dace is only found up on the Cumberland Plateau. Historically, that was a forested area and the Laurel Dace did great. But recently, a lot of the land has been converted to tomato fields. And when that happens and it rains, a lot of the silt, a lot of the dirt, washes down from those fields into the streams and basically suffocates the stream. Another problem is bass and sunfishes or brim are not native to the plateau. People bring them in, stock them in their fish ponds. We have a really, really wet spring. They get out of the ponds and they get in the stream. So now, not only do they have streams filled with dirt, they have predators that they didn't evolve with. So it's the one-two punch. These have to be the top two or three endangered fishes in the United States. Back in 2012, there were five streams that had Laurel Dace. We're now down to two streams. So just in a matter of six years, they've disappeared from over half the streams they were. A lot of people, when they think of extinction, they think of the big mammals in Africa, they think of the tropical rainforest in the Amazon, but we have an underwater rainforest right here in our backyards in the southeast, and a lot of those aquatic animals are on the brink of extinction, including the Laurel Dace. Anytime you have a really endangered species, you're always concerned that one or two events could make it disappear forever from the planet. So to safeguard that, you bring a population in with human care and uh, safeguard it against any uh, events that may happen out in the wild. Um, it's called an ark population like Noah's Ark. In order to have an idea on how to recover an endangered species, you need to know something about their life history. You need to know what they eat, how long they live, how many eggs they lay. To do this, you either need to preserve specimens and study them, or bring them in and study them in an aquarium. And that's what we did with the Laurel Dace. We got Laurel Dace two years ago and brought them into the Conservation Institute. And the first year, right off the bat, we got them to spawn, ended up with over 300 individuals. And now our second year, they've spawned again. And we have about 500 larvae right now that are feeding. So that's two years in a row that we've got the same individuals to spawn, which is really good. Obviously, we just can't sit here at the Conservation Institute and study this animal. So we are being proactive and we're trying to get a program together right now to contact the landowners of these tomato fields and see if we can work with them to put in better management practices to try to keep some of those sediments out of the stream. And maybe we can recover some of the streams that they've disappeared from. And now that we know we can reproduce Laurel Dace here at the Conservation Institute, we have a vehicle to stock Laurel Dace back into a stream if we can restore them. So there is hope, we just all have to work together towards this common goal of trying to improve the water quality for the humans that use the water and the Laurel Dace, and then hopefully we can get to a point where we can put some back into some of these streams where they've disappeared.